we're going to grade some animals and today we're going to do the Pacific white-sided dolphin. Ocean level, midway through the ocean. Some dolphins we can speak with, like bottlenose dolphins, they speak English like you or I, but white-sided dolphins, they still speak like a local dialect of dolphin that we haven't been able to crack the code yet. Did you know that a dolphin weighs like 150 to 225 pounds? Isn't that weird that dolphins and humans occupy the same like amount of weight? but we're like formed differently. Cause like you think about a woolly mammoth, right? A woolly mammoth has got to weigh like 400,000 tons, but like a dolphin and a human being the same exact weight during their life, that means that like, you can kind of understand the way a dolphin moves through the world because like, it's about the same size as you. Probably immediately you want to give it a bad grade, but here's the thing. You still have to grade it on a dolphin curve as being one of the most successful animals in the ocean. So I'm gonna say B plus. All right, today we're gonna to be grading the Avocet. The Avocet has a bent beak. Scientists still don't know why they have that. If anybody watching out there has an idea, post it in the comments. I mean, we'll figure it out. Maybe we can figure it out together. I think by having a bent beak, the Avocet takes a huge risk and that's a very exciting thing. I mean, that's a bird who's living on the edge, living on the edge of evolution. You know, here's the thing about the Avocet. While it does have a curved beak, there's a lot of birds out there with crazy beaks. If anybody should be getting dissed for having a crazy beak, it's gotta be the pink flamingo. But the pink flamingo is actually doing really well for itself. I'm gonna give the Avocet an A plus, and I almost have a want to live vicariously through the Avo set because sometimes in my life, like I have a day job and I do things like kind of by the book, but like maybe I should be more like an Avo set and have a bent beak. Right now we're going to be grading the conch there in the snail and also other snail team, ocean level and every goddamn ocean known to man. Right off the bat, I didn't know that the conch was even an animal that was seriously different than any, I thought clams, crabs, shells, scallop shells, basically all that stuff on the beach, it was all the same animal. And that animal was a kind of snot. A lot of animals in the ocean do cooler stuff than conchs, like swim in the ocean. So you know how we have hands? Well, you know what? The conch has an operculum. The operculum is a plate, and in the conch it is long, horny, and narrow. And by planting its operculum into the sand, the conch advances and leaps. It kind of pole vaults itself with its dick. Genus and species Stromus gigas, so... I don't know what the fuck that means. I'm gonna say the conch gets an A. The first animal we're grading is the scorpion fish. Team normal fishes, heme puffer fishes, fjord level. Pretty much North Africa, all throughout England. Also in the Mediterranean area. So if you look closely at the scorpion fish, you'll notice its skin is made of fractals specifically Mandelbrot sets. And it's really nice to see the scorpion fish holding up the great tradition of liking fractals, even if you're not good at math. One thing a scorpion fish likes to do is lie at the bottom of the sea, looking like a rock, and then hopefully somebody steps on it, and then it injects them with lethal poison. While it's well known that the scorpion fish participated in the Mediterranean Naval Theater of World War I, there's no evidence to suggest that they were ever at the Battle of Jutland. Could the Allies have benefited from the scorpion fish's poisonous venom and fractal skin? That is speculation for a different Instagram video. Injecting stuff with lethal poison is one of the coolest things any animal can do. So, A+, plus, that's how you're gonna do in my class. Today we're gonna be grading the land leech. Worm team and I don't know, fucking Venus flytrap team? Jungle level, and it only lives in Indonesian jungles. Fuck the land leech. This thing is gross and disgusting. In fact, I don't even like any type of animal that sticks to you and then sucks your blood. That's parasite shit. Fuck this animal. The thing about the land leech is they're disgusting pieces of shit. Fuck them. It uses that cute little like inchworm looping way, like it goes That's how the land leech does all of its attacks. They get a bunch of these fuckers together and then they all suck to one animal and then they just slurp up your blood until you're drained the fuck out and they don't fall off until they're fat with blood. If I had a land leech in my class, I probably would stomp it to death. F. 
Fuck you. How we're grading animals, and the first animal we're gonna grade is the snow vole. The snow vole is team cows, team mouse, and team mices. It's in the icy mountain level. It only lives in a little tiny part of Europe. So the main thing you gotta know about the snow vole is it's a cow hiding in a mouse's body. But not hiding as a mouse in the city because in the city you're gonna get exterminated by exterminators, cats, all types of shit like that. If you go to the tippy top of a mountain, you're gonna find snow voles. And check this shit out. The snow vole will, during the summer, cut blades of grass and leave it out to dry, almost like doing sort of curing food for the winter. So the snow vole possibly invented farming. The thing about the snow vole is it's a mouse, not a cow. C. So we're going to be grading the chamois, chamois. I don't know how you say this animal. Team goat, team deer, and team cow. It's in the ice mountain zone, pretty much super high mountains in Europe, but also for some reason, super high mountains in New Zealand. It's not a cow, it's not an antelope. It's just a chamois. I never saw this commercial, but I don't know if these animals are made out of sham wows. It's my understanding that the shammy wows jump kicked the guy from uh, Billy Mays. The thing about the sham wows is that they live on tippy top of a mountain and that's how they're able to ricochet off the top of them going a million miles an hour. Now if you ask me, I would never ever go on a tall bridge. You know why? Because life is worth living. The sham is a reckless fucking animal. So I'm going to give it a B plus. All right, today we're grading the brook trout. Team dopey looking fish and team active ass salmon. Brooks level, playing on freshwater mode. And East Coast represent. The brook trout is the original fish. A lot of people say that there are these dinosaur ass prehistoric fish that came before it. But if you look in the history books, the brook trout is the template. It even uses polka dots as a style unironically. The OG brook trout was introduced by humans to every single goddamn river, stream, lake of all time on account of it's so fun to go fishing against. It eats bugs, so again, fuck bugs. The thing about the brook trout is it only breeds in the winter, leaving the spring, summer, and fall brooks free of cum. And that gives the brook trout its G rating. So when you think of a happy brook, river, stream type brook with fast water running over some rocks all peaceful, don't forget to think of some brook trout. I've eaten brook trout two times, it's delicious. A plus plus. We're gonna grade the Thamen. Team goat, team deer, team overgrown rabbit deer. River reeds level and a little strip of tropical India. Most deers try to get attention by having some weird horn formation and the Thamen is no different. But instead of having branch style deer horns, the Thamen goes for a circular style. Thamen is a big time swimming enthusiast. And here's the most fucked up part. The Thamen aren't just swimmers. They're boaters too. Thamen eats this type of plant called the fundi. It's like a river seaweed. And the fundies jumble together on top of the lake. The Thamen swim out to them and use the giant pile of seaweed as a boat. They've been doing it so long, the Thamen's hooves started growing out like Dr. Spock's gang sign. Beyond that, they're your typical deer doing deer-like shit like getting into aggro horn battles trying to fuck a whole lot of babes, obviously while on top of the seaweed boat. The thing about the Thamens is there's not a lot of them left, so support your local Thamen. They make boats out of the fundies, which they affectionately call the Thamen Islands. Easy A. Today we're grading the Whirligig Beetle, Scary Chomper Beetle Team, and Gross Fucking Disgusting Beetle Team floating bushwater level, and all over Europe. So these guys were around since Game of Thrones times, all the way through the World Wars, right up to Brexit. Apparently, the Whirligig Beetle is an umbrella corporation of 400 different patented Whirligig beetle bugs who swim on top of the water for no apparent reason. For bugs, they go super fast all over the top of the water like little speedboats. And because they're aerodynamic, there's never been a single case of Whirligig beetles crashing into each other. The thing about the Whirligig beetle is it's a carnivore and hunts little larva worms. It dives headfirst into the ponds and hunts like a little shark. Whirligig beetles can make an air bubble submarine and go to the bottom of the pond, lake, or ocean. And they can fly. They have super powerful wings, but they don't really talk about it too much because they're very humble. Hell no. Get away from me, you scary ass gross bug. D. Today we're gonna grade the cod, team fish, 
Team Codfish. Ocean level, every fucking ocean you've ever heard of. In the Middle Ages, people named their dick plate armor after cods. The cod piece looked like a metal hard-on. The opposing army would stay away from your dick area because they didn't want to be seen as gay. Also, cod pieces had secret compartments to put ointments because in the Middle Ages, people never took showers and raw dogged everything, including livestock. So their dicks had oozing active lesions all over the shaft. Oh yeah, we were talking about cods. Have you ever heard, big fish eats smaller fish eats smaller fish? Well, you know who wrote that? The cod himself. The thing about the cod is even though it's the most plentiful fish in the ocean, scientists still know nothing about it. Anytime a scientist goes to study a cod, it ends up eating it before it even takes out a microscope. Scientists can't even tell the genders apart. Now that's what I call a topical fish. A. Today we're grading the Megapode. Team Clawbird and Team Cock jungle level, and only a tiny little bit of Australia. One thing Megapode doesn't give a shit about are its kids. The Megapode hatches their eggs, waits for the sun to come out, and bounces. Why? Because Megapode has better shit to do. When a Megapode is born, it never knows its family, so it never thinks to itself, oh, I should actually raise my kids. The thing about the Megapode is it evolved into Megapode first from being Minipode. And after that, it evolves into Ultrapode. It has an ongoing lawsuit with the Pokemon Corporation. This is what happened in Australia. Birds got really fucking lazy. For a long time, there were no cats around to stop them from doing irresponsible shit like leaving their eggs unattended. I give the Megapode credit for living outside the constraints of bird society, but I'm going to give it a C minus. I'm willing to change my grade if I see effort by next semester. Today, we're grading the amoeba. Amoeba. How about just amoeba? Team Microscope, Team Team Mitochondria, Floating Bushes, Pond Level, and wait a Psych! They're in every puddle of water known to man. In fact, right now as you watch this, you have amoebas on your hands, skin, eyes, lips, phone screen, dick, pussy, silverware, everything is covered in amoebas. The thing about the amoeba is it's a germ. Since when are we allowing germs to be animals? What's next, a dirt? Is it dirt an animal? Or a dust? And if anybody's like, oh, you're going too hard on the amoeba, well, maybe you enjoy getting amoebic dysentery. You know what that is? That's when you shit out of your eyeballs. I think the amoeba's dad wanted him to be a plankton, but he was just like, I really believe in this amoeba thing. One day, dad, you'll see. One day, I'm gonna give humans dysentery. And to this day, amoebas still grossly cover everything like a thin layer of slime. C plus. Today we're grading the Velvet Ant. Scary Chomper Beetle Team, Fly Team, Desert Level, Weed Triangle from Narcos, Mexico, as well as surrounding Breaking Bad set locations. Girl Velvet Ants look like this. Boy Velvet Ants are just wasps, flying around, being complete pieces of shit, busting inside of things, and their cum becomes Hellspawn, who eat you from the inside. So maybe a Velvet Ant is just a wasp who fucked an ant one time. The Velvet Ant, AKA the Cow Killer, because they sting you so hard that not only you die, but your cow will also die. Velvet ants make a crazy noise to warn predators. Few people have ever heard the velvet ants, but those who did all went out to become bugs. The thing about the velvet ant is the girls have huge bushes. And not just because it turns on certain Instagram animal scientists. They do it because in the blazing desert heat, a long luxurious bush provides shade and moisture. Mostly, the velvet ant injects- Yeah, Get the fucking bee away from me! Ah. Today we're grading the gibbon. Team gangly ass monkey and team minor league monkey jungle level, and Indonesian area. Walt Disney owes Gibbons like $6,500 million for stealing their whole shit for their Tarzan movie. That shit was all Gibbon-style brachiating. And if you remember Kingdom Hearts gameplay as Tarzan, Disney 100% swagger jacked off Gibbons for that. Who is the best Gibbon of all time? Of course, beloved Thai beanie baby Tango. Tango the monkey is a legend and ambassador of Gibbon goodness throughout the world. The thing about gibbons is one million years ago, all gibbons chilled on glaciers. Then one day they were like, fuck glaciers, this shit is cold. So they donned their skis and downhill slalomed into the jungles that they live today. Gibbons are master hooters. They have tons of albums of various hoots. Part of being a gibbon is you gotta come up with a new hoot every day or nobody will fuck you. I wish I could puff out my ball sack like that. A plus. 
Today we're grading the Ram Francus. But first, we have to go to prehistoric times. There we are. Team Dinosaur Skeleton, beach level, somewhere in Africa, but all the countries were swirled up because Earth was on a spin cycle. Ram Francus is a pterosaur dino. They only went out at night, had these jagged teeth, and a cool tail spike. But millions of years after Ram Francus died, the popular luchador heel character known as El Diablo stole Ram Francus' tail spike for his Bible cosplay. Ram Farinkus was nocturnal, which means mad goth. The thing about the Ram Farinkus is they did these kamikaze ocean attacks. Imagine you're some fish doing a 25 minute workout on the bait ball, and you look up and you see a 455 Husqvarna chainsaw in an 80 mile per hour dive bomb at your head. And in the moments before impact, the Ram Farinkus would say, Who's getting kamikaze now, bitch? And it was Ram Farinkus who once said, It's better to become immortalized in the fossil record than fade away. B. Today we're grading the Slow Loris, Little Baby Sized Mammal Team and Team Rodent Team, Tropical Jungle Level and Indian Ocean League Jungles. The Slow Loris is called the Bush Baby, or sometimes the Bush Little Ass Baby. Other names are Pato, Dumb Pato, Dwarf Bush Baby, and Stupid Fucking Dumbass Lesser Bush Baby. Why does everybody try to make fun of this guy in every single name? Even though lorises look like adorable stuffed animals, they will kill the shit out of bugs, so you know I love that. The thing about the slow loris is it wakes up in the morning, takes a bath in its own piss, and then walks around the forest leaving piss prints on everything. The entire species is pissing itself 24-7. Other lorises, smelling the dried piss on the branches, will piss in their hands and then leave their prints in a type of communication known as instant piss messaging. And this is why they're not called smart lorises. If you lock a slow loris in a freezer for two to four months, you open it up and it's a pine marten, a much better animal. C plus. Today we're grading the herring gull. Team clawbird, team beach bird, ocean cliffs level, everywhere on the northern hemisphere of the planet. Herring gulls are merciless predators who will fuck you up. I repeat, will fuck you up. They're four feet long, live 41 years, and adapt to any spot where they can kill, steal, or scavenge. Most of the time they don't even hunt, but just wait for someone to drop a pizza. But they will happily bite the face off a newborn baby in front of you. The thing about the herring gull is back in the 1800s they were almost murked out of existence. Back then women could only wear bird feather hats to express their hotness, and many birds lost their lives. Thankfully the herring gull survived, and decided to change their diet to one of complete garbage in order to game the system and become the unstoppable force they are today. When not being a Genghis Khan level marauder, herring gulls enjoy living in a one bedroom cliff nest with their lover often furnished with leaves, reeds, candy wrappers, and Chinese food containers. I don't like herring gulls or their squawking bullshit, but I respect their gangster. B minus. Today we're grading the leafcutter bee. Team horrible piece of shit beetles, team flies, meadow level, Europe, Asia, top of Africa, Russia, and China. Doesn't make honey, doesn't go on top of flowers, doesn't do bee dances to tell the other bees where the pollen's at, doesn't eat Cheerios. Basically does the most boring leaf cutting bullshit I've ever heard of. Honestly, what the fuck is going on here? How dare you call yourself a bee? This guy is trying to be a caterpillar or something. The thing about the leaf cutter bee is it doesn't sting. And that's really nice. But no matter how nice you are as a bug, if you get near me, I will kill you. They don't make a beehive. They make little ass origami cubes. They only live one year, but when they get born in autumn, they don't even go outside until spring. Have you ever? Some leafcutter bees make a nest that looks like a blunt, and that's the only cool thing I've seen them do so far. I can't believe other bees are allowing this to happen. D. Today we're grading the Jabiru Stork. Team Clawbird, Team Storkbird, River Reeds level, Central and South America. Jabiru's are the West Coast cousins of the Marabou Stork from Africa, but they're not close. Marabou storks like to chill in big groups. Jabiru's have a couple friends at most. Marabou storks deliver babies into women's vaginas after horrifically stabbing off a man's erect penis. Jabiru's aren't about that life. Jabiru storks are named after an Indian word, Zabiru, which means prolapsed asshole on your neck. The thing about Jabiru storks is right after that Indian guy said that, he got a beak jabiru through his brain. Jabiru storks are the biggest stork in America, really great flyers, build gigantic duplex style nests, not even endangered, and when they're not murdering raccoons, mice, frogs, snakes, and fish for the pleasure of it, you can catch Jabiru's just standing around with their mouth open being weird. These guys scare the shit out of me. B minus. Today we're grading the Gallinule. 
Team Clawbird, Team Storkbird, River Reeds level, all over North and South America, but suck our dicks, Canada. Back in the day, Gallinules were part of the Moorhen family, but in 2001, Moorhens filed for divorce against Gallinules in Bird Family Court, claiming they were biters of the gigantic overbeak. Unfortunately for Moorhens, Gallinules were like, you can't copyright gigantic front beaks, you stupid fucking moorhen. The thing about the gallon yule is it takes 3.47511 liter yules to make one gallon yule, but 4.574 liter yules to make one imperial gallon yule. Just remember, you can take four little quarter yules and divide by 1.057, or just ask Siri Alexa, what's the gallon yule conversion rate for today? In the meantime, gallon yules stay focused on their feather game and are regarded as having the sickest color combos in the entire wet bird sector. For all this effort, gallinules are still not doing enough to differentiate themselves from ducks. C. Today we're grading the comma. Horrible scary beetle team, moth team, meadow level, all over Europe. Flanders, the Somme, Verdun, Passchendaele, the Marne, Salonika, Gallipoli. Commas proliferated the World War I battlefield in order to live action separate the millions of casualties. The comma is a master of camouflage. Commas have been hiding in plain sight of your naked ass eyes for your entire life. Usually, but not always, with its best friend, the question mark. The thing about the comma is it can fly all the way up to space. Pretty good for a butterfly. And even though there's hardly any air in space, the comma just needs to snort a couple lines to stay conscious. Some scientists are confused whether the comma is actually a C. Because if you look at the wing this way, it's a comma. But if you look at it this way, it's a C. It's a really difficult animal to study. I really appreciate the contributions commas have made to society. Most animals can't even read. A. Or C. Today we're grading the duckbill platypus. Team cow, team platypus, Brooks level, Australia, 68 year in a row champion of strangest animal on earth, weirdest animal, abomination, freak of nature, house monotreme, last of his name. Obviously, platypus are half duck, half otters with beaver tails that lay eggs and have poisonous spit and a poisonous scratch. But one thing I found out was that even platypus's titty milk is poisonous. Actually, platypus moms don't have tits, their milk just oozes out but I was licking where I thought the tit was. The thing about the duckbill platypus is, even though it's the most fucked up animal of all time, I don't think it went far enough. I mean, what about a horse hoof platypus? Or an alligator snouted platypus? Or a jabiru stork beaked platypus? Or a thamen horned platypus? Or a velvet ant bushed platypus? Or a gibbon armed platypus? Or a pissing all over itself slow loris platypus? Easy A plus, but when are they coming out with the platypus expansion packs? Today we're grading the horseshoe bat. Team cows, team bats playing in the junior bat league. Rolling hills and meadows level across Europe, Asia, and even on Japan. Most bats wake up at the ass crack of sundown to have a full productive night of doing vampire shit. But the horseshoe bat is lazy. They wake up at midnight, jerk off nine to 10 times to bat porn, and then finally leave the tree at 2.30. Female horseshoe bats do a cool sex trick. After the boy bat nuts inside of her, she goes into hibernation keeping his cum in a jizz holding pattern. That way, she can enjoy a cozy hibernation, knowing those little spermies won't get her pregnant until spring. When the babies are born, obviously they suck the mama's titties for milk, but the mama also has two fake nipples, which are like rock climbing nodules for the baby to hold on to. The thing about bats is they're exactly like humans. Their skeletons match up almost identically. And they're even more identical when you realize that a bat's wings are made up of human ball sack membrane. Horseshoe bats don't even play horseshoes. They're named that because they're jacked up noses. See? Today we're grading the Mako shark. Team sharks, sexy sharks, ocean level, mad oceans. Mako sharks are beautiful. They're the sexiest, most hottest shark of all time. And the reason they're so hot is because Mako sharks are actually warm blooded. Mako sharks get overlooked because they're always in the shadow of that overweight resting on his laurels piece of shit, the great white shark. And let's keep it real. Great white sharks are not that good at hunting. They mostly wait for killer whales to murder a baby humpback so they can get sloppy seconds. The thing about mako sharks is they're ferociously hunting seals, sharks, dolphins, other fish, even jumping 30 feet out of the water to take out herring gulls. What they're not doing is being man-eaters. They consider that real little dick behavior. Humans have clocked mako sharks at 68 miles per hour, fastest fish in the sea. But when humans aren't around being pigs, makos have been known to chomp a NOS canister and hit like 120 on the Gulf Stream. Mako sharks are my favorite shark. Obviously, I'm going to give them an A. Plus. 
Today we're grading the cassowary. Team clawbirds, team ostriches, jungle level, Australia and Indonesia. The cassowary is world famous for being the bird who's murdered the most humans. During the Eocene War, team cats fought team birds for world domination. Cats had saber-toothed tigers and birds had the terror bird. Cassowaries were soldiers under terror bird, fighting alongside moa and elephant bird. But when Ice Age came out, both sides called a truce. Fast forward to modern times. Terror bird had gone extinct. Cats, now teamed up with humans, landed on Bird Island and had moa and elephant bird whacked. Cassowaries never forgave humans for doing their ancestral amigos dirty. That's why when a cassowary sees a human, it's on sight. Thing about cassowaries is not every cassowary will try to kill you immediately. Once there was this guy who raised a cassowary from an egg and took care of it, and they lived together for 50 years until it clawed his intestines out. Honestly, their feet look like big bird feet. C plus. Today we're grading the koala bear. Team cows, team kangaroos, grassy meadow level, east coast Australia. A koala bear has a tiny brain, and what's worse, their brain has virtually no folds, meaning scientifically, koala bears are dumb as fuck. One main reason koala bears are so stupid is that they've been inbreeding with each other for 2,580,000 million years. Koalas sleep 20 hours a day. In the remaining four, they eat eucalyptus and fuck family members. The thing about koala bears is they're not actually bears. And this infuriates real bears who feel like koalas are giving them a bad name. Koalas, you don't want it with polar bears. You don't want it with grizzly bears, Kodiak bears, black bears, Himalayan bears. Even panda bears will fuck you up if you ever try to swagger jack the bear name again. Koalas will also die if a human holds it because they get too stressed out. That shit would never happen to a real bear. F. Today we're grading the axolotl. Team frogs, team newts, pond level, tiny ass Mexican ponds. Axolotl can regrow their arms and legs back and even regenerate their heart if chopped off. Which made Aztec rain god Tlaloc be like, you mind if I chop out your heart and toss you off this pyramid? And Axolotl was like, dude, I'm not some bitch human who's gonna go die from that, do what you want. And they were BFFs from the Ozomotli Codex until now. The thing about the axolotl is its lungs are on the outside of its body. When a human's born with its lungs on the outside of its body, it's usually because during pregnancy the mom was smoking crack. So you gotta give credit to the axolotl for turning a horrible birth defect into a cool feature. Axolotls are neotenic, which means they don't grow up into adults. Instead of getting off their asses and becoming giant salamanders who can kill people, they prefer to dick around and stay embryo-style larvas forever. They're critically endangered. So if you ever want to see an axolotl alive again, Send $50 million to the cartel right now. D. Today we're grading the Dick Dick. Tiny little ass deer team, toy deer team, savanna level, east and west coast African savannas. Teensy, tiny, eensy, weensy, tiny little Dick Dicks. A little one foot tall deer who live in the middle of Africa, the major leagues of ferocious wild animals. So you know dick dicks are getting wailed on by leopards, caracals, lions, hyenas, wild dogs, monitor lizards, cheetahs, jackals, baboons, eagles, hawks, and premium animals unlocked at 5,000 followers. The name dick dick comes from a call that the females make when they're alarmed. Alarmed at how much they want dick. Here's what it sounds like. But if you slow it down, it sounds like this. I'm looking for some big old dick 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 dick. Looking for a dick, looking for a dick, looking for a dick. Despite being horny as fuck, they're actually monogamous deer. You can't really be out trying to get tons of dick and puss when any moment you can get chomped by a lion. The thing about dick dicks is they're one of the few deer who enjoy literature. In 2017, a dick dick was found with a copy of Arthur Bradford's Dog Walk. In its verified Amazon review, he said, I'm a dick dick. I don't have time to read long novels because my whole life is being chased by predators. So a book of short stories works out. My favorite was the puppies with flippers because they all die before maturity and can never chase me. If you're looking for a book where some guy goes around having ambivalent friendships with a criminally insane, pick up a copy of Dog Walker and knock yourself out. Is it what I'm supposed to say here? Obviously, this episode is sponsored by Arthur Bradford's Dog Walker Instagram account, which is in no way affiliated with Arthur Bradford, the guy who wrote Dog Walker Real Person. Okay, let's grade this dick. Dicks have this little below the eye asshole that they shit on various tree branches with so they can smell their way back home. Because their whole lives are spent running away from wild motherfuckers, 
They have bootleg elephant trunks that they use as a form of ram air intakes to create passive supercharging effects during high speed runaways from every other animal. It's amazing these pipsqueak dick dicks can even survive alongside these wild beasts. I'm gonna give them an A, and maybe a little D. Today we're grading the Amazon River Dolphin. Team whales, team dolphins, freshwater rivers of the Amazon. Amazon River Dolphins have what are known as melons on their head. The melons help with their ultrasonic sonar system, and they are one of the few animals who you can maintain eye contact with while also staring at their melons. They have giant triangular fins for doing reverse current 360 front side pop shove -its during tidal bores. And instead of a dorsal fin, they have horrible scoliosis. Legend has it that on the full moons, Amazon river dolphins transform themselves into humans and then enter the villages where they seduce and impregnate young women. Now, just to clarify for certain people watching, I'm not the father of your child. Um, I know it looks like me, but it was an Amazon River Dolphin. I really wish their distribution deal got them into more freshwater rivers, but I'm also glad they never went too mainstream. A minus. Today we're grading the Wolverine. Team cows, team carnivores, team weasels. Pine tree level, northern forests of the world. Wolverines do all their kills on some sneak shit. Their main attack is to climb up a tree and wait for a reindeer to pass by. Then they dive off the top branch and hit him with a flying DDT. The thing about Wolverines is they have a special tooth that's turned 90 degrees inward. So their bite can rip a rib cage off a spinal column with a maximum torque of 1,698 pounds per foot. While Wolverines do have mad strength and aggressiveness, they're constantly killed and eaten by real predators. Versus black bears, it's an even matchup but Wolverines are 12 to one underdogs versus wolves, cougars, and grizzlies. For all matches, the claw swipes over under is 37. Wolverines allowed their name to get co-opted by a global media corporation to make them seem much cooler than they actually are. This zero integrity opportunistic selling out is a very on-brand Wolverine move. C plus, go weasels. Today we're grading the leaf insect. Scary ass beetle team, stick bug team, jungle level, Indonesia. Many bugs spend their lives building tunnels, hives, cubicles, fighting wars, being a drone ass worker in a meaningless cycle of bug samsara. The leaf insect, seeking spiritual enlightenment, disengaged from the world of bugs and sought to reconnect with nature. And upon renouncing all bug life and finding bug nirvana, the leaf insect started to identify as a leaf and eventually transitioned into a leaf insect bug. Yo, the thing about the leaf bug is that they're parthenogenesis. That means the female can reproduce without a male. Basically, the leaf bug gets dressed, goes to the club, gets drunk, goes home and has a one night stand by herself. That has come up in my research. Keep going. Did you know that all leaf bugs are vegans? They eat raspberry leaves and blackberry leaves. Wouldn't that be cannibalism? Leaf bugs are so good at pretending to be leaves they often get bitten by other leaf bugs who can't tell them apart. So now who's the asshole? Like most hippie bullshit, the leaf bug does all this to get out of having to work for a living. And I can relate. Having a day job sucks my dick off. But I see eye to eye with the leaf bug insect in that I too would hate to be a bug. D plus. P.S. You're still a bug, and I will probably accidentally rake you off my lawn. Today we're grading the crate. Team snakes, team serpents, jungle level, India and Indonesia biomes. Crates are members of the big four. Along with the spectacled cobra, saw-scaled viper, and Russell's viper, the big four are responsible for 250,000 bites a year, with at least 10,000 of those resulting in horrible deaths. The thing about the crate is their bites don't even hurt. Five hours later, your facial muscles start tweaking out, you can't see or talk, and then you start suffocating to death. Worst thing of all, crate bites don't even get you slightly buzzed. Rudyard Kipling, Sherlock Holmes, Road Dahl, James Patterson, and Michael Crichton used crates to kill motherfuckers in various novels. Crates grow to about six or seven feet long and have a vascular, girthy circumference of 10 inches. But due to their prominent spines, crates have a triangular shape. So while crates will for sure stretch your shit out, I don't recommend fucking them. Because of the venom. A plus. 